Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. We're doing another live broadcast of a tummy tuck. We're setting up a little bit here. Can you look at that and level it, Louis? Give her some direction. Give her some direction. And uh, we're starting with our super low incision. This is a standard tummy tuck because the length of the incision is short. Wait, you guys are terrible. Anyway, beginning with our incision is our Bovion 70, please. Okay. And Jen, if you could come in here and help us set up camera three, because I want to make sure it's correct. All right. Actually, it's not bad, believe it or not. Okay, can you level it? Oh, perfect. Ah, too much. Great. Okay, so I've made my incision partial thickness skin, and we'll start by slowly and carefully going through this. We want good hemostasis, minimal bleeding, if any at all. What? Tom, could I have the table up a little bit, please? Great. Thank you. All right. Nice. Did we scare the stud away? No. This is an thing. Something like that. A nice block. You should get yourself a forceps handy. Mm -hmm. Clean it up, that one got away. Obviously block. Let's get our towel clips. Good, nice and clean. Alright. Not a little further. Actually. Okay, good. Yeah. That's alright, I guess. That looks <laughs> even to you. Alright. So, I'll give you some counter traction. We're going to go down to the fascia and then come up towards that's nice and clean. All right. Actually, okay, good. That's yeah. <laughs> all right, I guess. That looks even to you. All right, so.
this patient had a little lipo contouring of her back bra area and flanks prior to being turned over and set up for the abdominoplasty part of this procedure which we're well underway with right now. Let me see something here. Okay, yeah, so she had a previous C-section scar, which healed very nicely, and that's what you're seeing under here, is contracted scar tissue. I'm gonna fool this, Lewis. Mm -hmm. We'll show her. Can we have the table up a little bit more, Tom? Once we get past that scar, it's sort of smooth sailing, you know? close so let's split the flap now mm -hmm. she has the dreaded belly button piercing which always makes this case a little bit more challenging because we have to take off more skin if we want to get rid of that redundant scar because it doesn't look too well sitting on the bottom of her incision on the bottom of her abdomen by the incision so I'm cutting a belly button cuff of about a centimeter got a really robust blood supply. Mm -hmm. Tina on Instagram, the answer is absolutely yes. Usually patients with a C-section will have the C-section scar removed as part of their specimen, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, so you'll only be left with one scar that in most patients is substantially lower than the position of the C-section scar that they come in with. So yes, you can have a tummy tuck and lipocontouring, liposculpture with a previous c-section hopefully that answers your question okay let's go Hey Dawn on Facebook, thanks for joining us, thanks for watching. And thanks for being, thanks for being patriotic. Come on, let's go, get the forceps. Hey Bachiva, thanks for watching and thanks for the support as usual on Facebook. So what we're doing right now is carefully coring out the belly button and the belly button stalk. And we're getting control of some of this brisk bleeding that we had, which is cool in the sense that she's got a great blood supply, but it can be a little bit annoying and distracting while we're doing our case. Mm -hmm. Repeat. If, 
Ivana on Instagram, thanks for watching. Hello to you. All right, well, we're getting beyond the belly button. What we want to always look for is many of these patients who've had pregnancies such as this patient can have a little hernia. I want to see if we've got that going on here. It's kind of got the uh, earmarks of it, but we're going to carefully dissect the stalk away. And if there is a hernia, we just fix it. We reduce it and close the space, close the opening. All right, we're doing great here. Moving right along. So our goal is to bring, elevate this flap. Lewis always makes it hard for me. Uh, this is her xiphoid, the bottom of her sternum. This is her costal margin. So we want to be about a centimeter beyond that so we can get good inferior pull on the flap. And we want to get as much as smoothing as we can. most part of the dissection and I'm moving up about a centimeter at a time okay if you look see we're almost reaching with the flap already and we still have a good four inches ten centimeters to go What's your favorite part of these cases, this? This. What, elevating the flap? Uh -huh. My favorite part is the plication. Really? Well, <laughs> you know, just to get to see how much, yeah, you know, together. they're going to be, uh, you, can also, you can tell about how flat they're going to be, or almost yeah. correlate that with how happy they're going to be. Right. Andy, you could just tune into Instagram and watch. You don't have to <laughs> sit at the top of the table. I know you're a very enthusiastic nurse. Instagram, the question of recovery depends on specifically what you're asking. Our patients will go home the same day as their procedure. They're up and around immediately. We see them the next morning for their first follow-up, so they actually come back where we do their dressing change and first wound check. Uh, patients are encouraged to start walking uh, immediately, night of surgery. Uh, they can be back to most of their normal activity. That means anything without excluding heavy lifting or aggressive exercise that, uh, at about two weeks. They can be back to full exercise at about four weeks without core and then back to everything including core at about six weeks. Hopefully that answers your question, Julia. Okay. All right, are we dry? No, no, I was kidding. Come on. Right here. <laughs> I love hearing myself on Instagram in the same room. Okay. Thank you other questions, too. Uh, well, you can watch it, but... Okay. So, look at that. Okay. Good. 
I think we're pretty much high enough. So let's remove our flap. Here we go. So we're well above our and belly button. Thanks for that. The uh, is plugged in. And then there's a clear plastic bag right underneath. Yeah. Open one up. So, all right, it's time to remove our skin and fat flap. Hold on to me. Good. Set the bag on top and then Stay with me, it. please. Zero it. Oh, zero it, yeah. Okay, grab. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, make sure um, camera two will be able to show the flap. Okay. Cool. Super clean case, it is. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure this lady is very dry. Yep. Okay, so we have our skin and fat flap. Okay, and we're going to take it. Louis, you just gave everybody like motion sickness. Wrap it up and tie it so they can see the weight on the scale. What does it say? Two point one pounds. Now this patient would certainly think uh, that more than two pounds were removed when she sees how thin she looks after this procedure, but the reality is her belly looked the way it did because of this muscle separation called a diastasis. Now, if you watch on camera three, marking pen, please. Camera three, please. Okay, uh, is in the wrong place. Okay, 
You see when I'm holding this up, this creates this space between these two muscles. The separation is obvious. Here it goes. So I'm about a centimeter out from the edge of the muscles. And I'm marking that with my marking pen because I will bring this together in the midline. See that gully? See that right there? And once I make this repair, basically what it does is restore the muscles to their pre-pregnancy, pre-weight gain position. And that is what makes the patients look flatter. It's almost uh, the equivalent of having a corset oh, or a girdle on under the skin. Okay. There's that robust blood supply. We've got to be super careful. Hold up. along here. sutures are placed approximately a centimeter apart. It's almost like a sewing machine is laying these down. Okay. I take advantage of this nice C-section scar for a really good purchase on this tissue. So it'll hold this repair nicely. Uh, out of 2,500 of these, I've never had a true dehiscence or failure of this repair yet. I've had one patient recently that went on to lose an additional, how much did that small girl lose? 25, 30 pounds? Yeah. Additional 30 pounds and she was not a giant. So it made the diastasis repair seem like it wasn't having the, the effect that it was intended to have. So we revised it, but the suture itself was intact. All right, so let's look at this. Take a look now. Let's get a uh, nice view here. This is our repaired area. Do you see how it's got tension and support? And this is unrepaired. You can almost put your hand straight through to the other side. Before, after. All right, so we'll do the same thing with the top. It's almost like a zipper. Did you happen to record uh, when we began this case in terms of not, not the original lipo, but the actual tummy tuck? No, it wasn't. Um, that was for, for the lipo. Hey, Jen, how much time do we have on this case so far from your video counter?
So we're 27 minutes into this case. In 27 minutes, we've elevated the flap, we've made our decision, elevated the flap, and done almost all of our diastasis repair. 27 minutes, and we're not rushing, but we're moving along at a steady clip. You know, when you do thousands of these cases, you tend to get more efficient and uh, things move along a little bit more quickly and that's great for patients. It's shorter surgery time, less anesthesia. They're up and around faster. I mean, there was a time where Lewis used to slow me down, but now he's, he's all in. He's joining the team completely and uh, our cases move very nicely. That's the benefit of working with the same people every day. You know, some doctors don't have that luxury some of the private surgery centers. Look at that, nice, as they say. So Lewis will retract the uh, umbilical stalk out of the way, the belly button stalk, so that I can get as close to it as I can without choking it. Let me see something. Up another stitch in there. It's always the last one that gets you loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, blot. You'll get rid of that for a second. The bleeding comes from getting a small bite of the rectus muscle usually, but uh, that stops quite nicely. Lewis is marking the 12 o'clock position on the belly button so that we know once we bring it out through its new egress that uh, it's oriented correctly and it's not torqued. So let's get a safety stitch here without making the patient bleed. More. Wow. That's going to be okay up there, Lewis? Mm hmm. I always ask Lewis if it's going to be okay, and pretty much 100% of the time he says yes, even when it's not. But at least it makes me feel good about what I'm doing. Get a 3 0 Vicro and pack down. Thank you, Tracy, but what about the wife, huh? Thanks for the acknowledgement. I thought that would give you a chuckle. Okay, so what is our time so far, Jen? What? 31 minutes, skin incision, flap elevation, plication repaired, and at 31 minutes, we will begin to close. Tom could have a little bit of crack. Okay. Oh, please. So look at this nice space that we have here. All right, plenty. Thanks. Okay. So we'll put our center stitch in and get this in good alignment. And then we will go. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's help me. Okay. Good. Got a little bit of fat on that stitch mm -hmm. All right. So we've got our center stitch in, that's plenty. Cut. Now we'll use uh, towel clips to line up our incision and then we'll continue our closure.
some days he doesn't think so. <laughs> Wanna grab this? Take this one off. Alright, perfect. Alright. So we've got our flaps lined up and make a mental note of the spacing. And we'll start tacking these down and removing our hardware as we go. So I go from thickest to thinnest suture material as we progress. Generally a pleasant case, eh, Lewis? Yes. Yes. Another one on the counter. That snap off. Mm hmm. Two L, please. Mm -hmm. Nanu, can we please open up another uh, O for the other side? O Vicro. Just throw it on the tray for us. Or oh, please. Oh, All right. So, which each progressive suture, the incision becomes further approximated. Have um, another snap, please. Snap crack on top. Okay. 
And then get the drain ready with the 3091. Rio Nylon, please come on, let's go. On the top? Right there. Right there. With 3 0 Vicro. A tummy tuck procedure on, is usually go, comprised go, 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 go. of three parts. We begin by making an incision in the groin crease, something that's well below the average bikini bottom, bikini underwear, or pants top in men. The procedure next involves elevating the skin off of the rectus or the abdominal musculature. What's most important here is restoring the rectus anatomy. Next, we pull the abdominal skin flap down and remove the excess skin. Now, there are several ways we can address the belly button. Most times, however, the umbilicus or belly button is actually cut out, the flap is pulled down, and the belly button is brought out through a new opening. I've had the great fortune in my practice to perform over 2,400 tummy tucks in the last 16 years. This vast experience with this particular procedure has definitely made us the practice of excellence for having this type of surgery. This experience will put you in a very good position if this is a procedure that you're interested in. The likelihood of you having a result that makes you happy is exceptionally high. The chance of having complications is very low. This is all a result of this vast experience that I've had with this one particular procedure. Okay, so now we're going to put our finishing stitch in, which I'll start, and Lewis will finish, which will bring these skin edges even more precisely together and give us a beautiful scar when all is said and done. Tracy, all of these sutures will eventually be absorbed uh, by the body, broken down and absorbed, except for the plication stitch, which is the one in the center that will serve the muscles. That is permanent. Okay, so what I'm doing now is positioning 
the belly button. So I feel the belly button from underneath it and bring my finger up. So it's about right here, which I will check. And it's excellent because it corresponds with a nice stretch mark. So let's mark our flaps again, Lewis. Let's tack them down. So we have half of the incision closed. So, oh, Jennifer, what is our time now? 44 minutes. Okay. So we're pretty much three quarters of the way done with a standard tummy tuck in 44 minutes. We should be close to finishing at about an hour, which is a really respectable time for a standard abdominal plastic. I think, Nanu, you've seen a couple hundred of these in the recovery room. What do you think about seeing it in real time? To change your perspective on it at all? Tom, how's our pressure? Huh? Oh, I love it. See how skinny she looks now? Skinny, is that even a word? How thin? Where'd skinny come from? Did you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. Skinny. It just doesn't really make any sense when you think about it. No. Does that mean like you're all skin? <laughs> skinny. Oh, well, I guess chubby. What does chubby mean? You know, think about it. What does that word mean? Okay, chubby? Oh, shit, does I mean, theoretically, you should be called fatty, or fat-like, or fattish, or chubby. I've heard that word used in other ways to describe other things, yeah. which we shall not talk about here. especially heavier stitches a little deeper so that when they're broken down they don't get pushed out spitting suture you know you see that from time to time especially with this bike roll it's better uh, they're cracking over there now the one thing that's interesting in patients that have these stria or stretch marks, you know, it's kind of like pulling apart an accordion. The upper flap is a little bit longer than the lower flap because if you look at it, it's almost like 20% more surface area because of the stretch marks. So it makes lining up the upper and lower incision a little bit more challenging. This is why we do this 
attacking technique to get it approximately where we want it, and then we finish it up with the second and third set of stitches. You know, over the course of five years, Lewis has become gotten some mastery at this. Our incisions look really nice. is coming out. It's like got excellent symmetry, excellent placement, super low. Mm -hmm. mm. The patient's going to be very happy. You couldn't ask for anything better in a result on a tummy tuck. through this. Next we'll put our left drain in. And then Lewis and I will flip switch sides and get going. Left drain coming up. Enough on that minor curl to finish. Yep. Nice. Can we get 3L Vico after this? Mm -hmm. It's all set up for me. Yeah.
So we've got skin incision, flap elevation, diastasis repair with plication, and incision pretty much 75%, 80% done. The last thing we need to do is bring out the belly button. Jen, what's our time right now? We did it in 53 minutes. It'll take me about 10 minutes. You know, 55 minutes is a super good time, but we're just about five minutes over that when we're done here. Still, you know, very, very good time. Okay, we'll get our true. True, true. What? Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna make sure I'm at my center point. Lewis, can you get me some moisture on this? It's making me crazy right now. Hey, Selena, I watch you on Instagram. You're beautiful enough. I can't possibly think of anything you would need. Or were you just fishing for a compliment? <laughs> anyway, it's good to hear from you and we hope to see you soon. All right, so I'm bringing out uh, I'll be bringing out my belly button through this opening right here. Ow, right there. So I'm making my skin incision. Sometimes I worry because these stretch marks can have very, very attenuated or weak blood supply because the skin is so thin. But I mean, we have no choice because this is where the belly button, the new belly button position will be. So we just have to go with that. So once I take this little disc of skin out, what I'm going to do next is use some blunt dissection to get the 401 or driver for me. Mm -hmm. To go through this fat and get down there and grab my belly button. Remember, we made that with a generous cuff of skin on it so it can reach up through this. It's a little tight down the bottom. I don't want it to get choked off. You know, and Lewis, because of his wealth of experience, marked the belly button at the 12 o'clock position. So we'll know if the orientation is correct. Oh, here it comes. Force up. It's coming. Uh, it's a girl. <laughs> the belly button has been delivered. Okay, so we'll use our Alice attack it. Lewis, you could get going. It'd be wonderful if we both finish at the same exact time, Lewis. It would be wonderful. It would be wonderful, but will it be? <laughs> I'm at my three hours for my next meal, so case is ending perfectly on time. Huh? My meals? Nine weeks. I lost about 5% body fat in two months, which is phenomenal. Tom found it. Tom doesn't get body fat. Tom, Tom's like, <laughs> Tom, can eat as much chocolate, chocolate cake, carbohydrates, pizza, pasta. No effect. Yeah. No effect. I, at least externally, he looks the same. I might still, I might still be doing that if I had no visual effect. But I can gain eight pounds on one weekend of bad eating, which is disgusting. So I've chosen not to abuse myself like that anymore. So yesterday was my cheat day. And um, 
I had not my cheat day, cheat meal, and I had three slices of pizza just because. Ooh. And I didn't even feel like it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, boy, this is so disappointing. So disappointing. So I just, you know, I stick with my six meals a day mm -hmm. and my protein drinks and I feel better, I look better. Yeah. You know. God, I was so addicted to sugar, Nano. So addicted. There was a time here, we had a tech named Lisa. She was like, super funny. Tom will, Tom will verify this. We would like get, it, we were like codependent. Like we'd get, one person would get a craving. And I was like, yeah, that sounds really good. And we'd send someone out, like while we were doing cases, to get us things like pink box donuts. And uh, we would be fiending for it, like dope fiending for donuts while we were doing the case, knowing that they were in the kitchen. And it was, the case is over, it's like we were knocking each other down to be the first one in there. So we would pound down these donuts, right? And we'd get our sugar high and about an hour and a half into the next case, we would totally crash. And it was horrible. Do you think that we were deterred by that? Do you think that we stopped doing that? No way, no way. We just wanted to prove that it was true. So we just kept doing it, <laughs> you know? All right, so we're tacking our belly button in. Lewis is trying to hide my excellent work with his chicken arm. Um, <laughs> tacking my belly button in. And now these are the only sutures besides the drain sutures that need to be removed. These sutures come out at about two weeks. What do you think, student? You're getting like a tour de force of plastic surgery procedures today. Just make sure you tell Ms. V how good we were to you. That's why she keeps sending us students. All right. Jen, what's our time now? We are exactly one hour and the last belly button stitch is going to go in. Lewis has got a, probably another five minutes. Pretty good time, eh guys? Mm -hmm. don't, don't all compliment me at once. <laughs> okay, well Jen, we could go to camera one. All right. So we're finishing up our abdominal plasty. This is a standard tummy tuck, which uh, we, we label it standard mini versus extended based on the length of the incision. This is staying in uh, be, you know, between the iliac crest, okay? So it's a standard. Anything beyond the horizon would make it an extended. Anything shorter would make it a mini. So we did a standard tummy tuck. We've completed that. We did some lipo contouring on her back bra and flank area, which is gonna give her a super nice waist. As you can see, she's gonna be exceptionally happy, I am sure. Uh, and we did it in a very respectable amount of time, which is a benefit to the patient uh, in terms of you know, anesthesia time, surgery time, et cetera. 
she'll go to the recovery room now or she'll stay for about one to two hours or as long as necessary. When she's stable, she'll go home and we'll see her in the morning. Thanks for watching our stream and we look forward to your questions, comments, and suggestions. Please subscribe and tell your friends about our, our stream. Have a great day and we'll see you on our next show. Take care. Hi, I'm Dr. Style, and I want to thank you for watching our latest video stream. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future streams, please contact us on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or you can message us directly through our website at drstyle.com. That's D-R-S-T-I-L-E.com. We look forward to seeing you during our future streams. Have a great day.